one finite uh, rod is there a thin wire on this the charges are distributed along the length of the wire then this distribution is called as linear charge distribution and it is having the length L it is having the finite length L and uh, the selected a point P at a distance R from the wire okay, the perpendicular line drawn to the length of the wire is nothing but here say this is the OP O2P length is R now at this point P the lower end of the wire is making alpha angle with this OP line and upper end of the wire is making beta angle with the OP line. Now what is the field intensity, electric field intensity due to the line charge AB? Here to find out that field intensity at the point P, we are following the same method, we are dividing this uh, line charge into elements one of the element I selected at a P dash this element is at a distance X and its length is DX the length of this small element is DX okay now this element is making an angle theta with the reference line OP right here the another point of the element is making an angle this angle is I am considering as a d phi d theta now this is the element on this element what is the charge here the charge on the element is I am considering as a dq dq is charge on element charge on element that is equal to linear charge density into length of the element length of the element is here dx now find the field intensity due to this charge element why because this element is looking like as a point charge the field intensity due to charge element DE DE is field due to element that uh, field due to element is K DQ the charge is what sorry DQ by square of this distance from the triangle OP P dash from the triangle O P P dash see the P to P dash gives the distance this distance is root over R square plus X square we can write root over R square plus X square the distance uh, P to P dash distance is root over R square plus X square now root over R square plus X square distance square we need whole square this is the field due to this small element this field due to the small element DE acts it is a positive charge so that's why it acts away from the positive charge now this field intensity we can resolve into two components say this is a perpendicular line to the line charge I am considering as the x-axis and this line is I am considering as the y-axis now here the angle is theta hence this angle is also theta so x component is DE cos theta and here y component is DE sin theta DE sin theta and DE cos theta this is the d cos theta is perpendicular component to the length of the wire due to the small element d sin theta is perpendicular component of electric field no, sorry parallel component of electric field 
due to the small element of the wire now like this all the elements for this all the elements the field intensities we can uh, resolve into two components then all the x components all the x components if you add will get the total field intensity x component and if you all the y components if you add will get the y component of total field intensity instead of adding what we are doing integrating we are doing first uh, we find the field intensity in x direction field intensity in x direction is i am considering as the ex ex is equal to integral of de x component of field intensity that is de cos theta now here de de is nothing but k dq is lambda into dx by root over r square plus x square whole square now r square plus x square into cos theta from this triangle o p p dash cos theta is adjacent side divided by hypotenuse adjacent side is r hypotenuse is what sir p p dash that is root over r square plus x square now i am substituting it r divided by root over r square plus x square okay here this x value from where to where from the lower end to upper end we have to find out the field intensity so the limits from where to where lower end where is that minus lower end a and upper end b okay o2 a length to o2 b length we have to find out okay now here field intensity e x equal to in k is constant lambda is constant i'm taking outside the integration k lambda integral here r is also constant i'm writing outside then 1 divided by r square plus x square into root over r square plus x square we can write as a r square plus x square power 3 by 2 into dx the limits later on i substitute okay now ex is equal to here to solve this uh, problem r square plus x square to solve this problem i am using the substitution method of integration let me substitute that term. how how i am what i am substituting here from this triangle opp dash from the triangle opp dash op from the triangle opp dash tan theta is equal to we can write as a opposite side x divided by adjacent side r x by r from this x is equal to we can write like as a r tan theta x is equal to r tan theta and uh, dx is equal to differentiation of x we are doing the differentiation on both sides dx is equal to r is constant we, we don't change differentiation of tan theta is secant square theta d theta now these two we are substituting in the dx value if you substitute here then ex is equal to k lambda r integral 1 by r square plus x square means r tan theta r square tan square theta to the power of 3 by 2 and dx dx is r secant theta d theta 
ओके नाउ डी एक्स इज इक्वल टू के लैमडा आर इंटू आर आर स्क्वायर इंटीग्रल ऑफ वन बाई हियर आर स्क्वायर आई एम टेकिंग कॉमन आर स्क्वायर पावर थ्री बाई टू द रिमेनिंग इज वन प्लस टेन स्क्वायर टीटा पावर थ्री बाई टू हियर आर ऑलरेडी आई मल्टीप्लाइड हियर रिमेनिंग इज सेकेंड टीटा इंटू डी टीटा नाउ वी आर कैलकुलेटिंग दैट ई एक्स इज इक्वल टू के लैमडा आर स्क्वायर हियर आर स्क्वायर पावर थ्री बाई टू इज एयर दिस टू टू गेट्स कैंसल Here r square power three by two is there. These two two gets cancel each other. Remaining is what sir r cube. That is a constant. So that's why I'm taking outside of the integration integral secant square theta divided by one plus tan square theta is secant square theta power three by two is there. Into d theta. Now, e x equal to e x equal to k lambda r square by r cube. We can write like as a r integral secant square theta by secant square power three by two. Now, these two two gets cancel. The remaining is secant cube theta. So, secant square theta by secant cube theta is what, sir? One by secant theta. By secant theta d theta. Now e x is equal to k lambda by r integral one by secant theta is nothing but that is a cos theta d theta. Now I am doing the differential integration for this one from where to where from the a end to b end. We are doing the integration with respect to the theta at last. So a end is At an angle alpha with the reference line, B and E is at an angle beta with the reference line. Now, now our limits from alpha to beta. Limits from alpha to beta. Here, <coughs> I am rewriting re re rewriting that uh, equation once again. E x. We got as k lambda by r integral cos theta d theta from alpha to beta. Now integrate this one. K lambda by r integral cos theta. <coughs> integral cos theta is sine theta from alpha to beta. Now. K lambda by r sine beta. First time substituting the upper limit minus sine alpha. This is the e x. Here. <coughs> d sin theta if you integrate then you will get that uh, what's the total field intensity in uh, y direction okay now d value i substituted here k lambda dx by r square plus x square and the sin theta the sin theta is from this diagram opposite side divided by hypotenuse what is the opposite side here x And uh, up, hypotenuse is root over r square plus x square. Now, if I substitute that, uh, we'll get uh, sine theta is equal to x by r square plus x square to the power of one uh, by two. Now, e y is equal to integral. Here k lambda is constant. I'm taking outside integral x dx divided by r square plus x square. To the power of three by two, right? Now, here, as we substituted in this, uh, 
x value again i'm substituting as a r tan theta in this to solve the ey also and a y dx value i'm substituting as a r secant square theta d theta here if i substitute that one then ey is equal to k lambda to x is r tan theta and uh, dx is r secant square theta d theta and uh, 1 is the r square plus x square to the power of 3 by 2 r square plus x square to the power of 3 by 2 we got as what sir r cube secant square theta secant cube theta will get okay i am writing directly r cube secant cube theta now here r r r square by r cube is there so we get k lambda by r here secant square theta divided by secant cube theta that is cos theta k tan theta into cos theta d theta now tan theta into cos theta is nothing but what sir sin theta so ey is equal to k lambda by r integral sin theta d theta now the limits i'm applying from where to where like a uh, last one substituted from alpha to beta same way here also we are substituting that alpha to beta now ey is equal to k lambda by r integral sin theta is nothing but minus cos theta from alpha to beta now ey is equal to k lambda by r k cos theta here upper limit if you substitute minus cos beta minus of minus lower limit if you substitute cos alpha then we will get ey equal to k lambda by r minus of minus cos alpha plus cos alpha minus cos beta this is the field intensity due to the line charge along the y direction okay now i am redrawing redrawing this diagram once again in this derivation we got ex value is a k lambda by r sin beta minus sin alpha i am writing here ex is equal to k lambda by r sin beta minus sin alpha and uh, ey is equal to we got as a k lambda by r cos alpha minus cos beta ey is equal to k lambda by r cos alpha minus cos beta these are the two things we got now the total field intensity e bar is equal to we can write like as a ex i component plus ey j component okay and magnitude of e bar is equal to root over ex square plus e y square we can write and uh, the direction is tan alpha tan phi is equal to y component of the field intensity and x component of field intensity these are the formulas we have to use uh, mm, to calculate the total field intensity vector magnitude of field intensity vector and uh, direction of field intensity vector here phi tan phi phi gives the what's our angle between a uh, x component of vector and the resultant vector the resultant vector acts like this this is the e bar and that angle is uh, what's a phi now while using this uh, formula you have to follow the uh, sign convention what is the sign convention here this op we have taken as a reference line if the angle if you measure in in a downward direction to the reference line ok 
okay that angle we have to consider as a negative angle and uh, the beta angle is above the reference line so that's why we have to take this beta as a positive okay after following the sign convention from the sign convention from the sign convention alpha is here negative and uh, beta is uh, positive so if you substitute that uh, values in the ex and ey then ex is equal to we get like as a k lambda by r sin beta beta is here positive so that's why i'm writing as it is leave minus sin of minus alpha so then ex is equal to we get like as a k lambda by r sin beta minus of minus sin alpha is nothing but plus sin alpha this is the ex value in this case <coughs> next okay next ey just ey is equal to we can write like as a here k lambda by r cos alpha alpha is negative okay so cos of minus alpha minus cos beta okay then ey is equal to k lambda by r cos of uh, minus alpha means cos alpha minus cos beta this is the ey value if we use the sign convention the final formula will get like this okay now for example alpha and beta both are equal alpha and beta both are equal na then for this where the point will be on the bisector okay this angle alpha and beta both are same angle na alpha is equal to beta na this beta is also we can write like as alpha then the point p we can consider that is on the bisector okay on the bisector if you substitute alpha is equal to beta value then ex is equal to what is that sin k lambda by r sin beta beta is nothing but here alpha only i already used the sign convention so that's why once again i'm not using sin alpha plus sin alpha that equal to e x equal to k lambda by r okay sin alpha plus sin alpha is nothing but 2 sin alpha okay then from this ex value is equal to 2 k lambda by r 2 sin alpha sin alpha we can write like as a this is a l by 2 and this is r okay so sin alpha we can write like as ex is equal to k lambda by r sin alpha from this triangle from the triangle oap opposite side is 2 is already there sin alpha opposite side l by 2 by hypotenuse hypotenuse is what sir here root over r square plus l by 2 square and l square by 4 then if you calculate that one ex is equal to this 2 2 gets cancel then k lambda by r k l divided by root over r square plus l square by 4 and now 4 r square 4 r square plus l square root 4 is nothing but 2 will come the 2 i am writing here this is the field intensity in a x direction on the bisector okay now 
so y component what's the y component e y is equal to k cos alpha minus cos beta k lambda by r cos alpha minus cos beta beta is nothing but what has what's are here alpha only why the point is on the bisector cos alpha minus cos alpha the total angle is equal to zero so y component will become equal to zero whenever you select a point on the bisector of the finite charged wire then the resultant field only x component is there k lambda 2 k lambda by r l by root over 4 r square plus l square and y component will become equal to zero hence the resultant field intensity acts along the x direction that is a bisector direction okay this is a electric field intensity due to the finite wire on the bisector if the wire is if the wire is a infinite length wire if the wire is infinite length wire what can we do okay now field intensity due to the infinite length wire This is the infinite length wire. I selected a point P at a certain distance, perpendicular distance R from the wire. Then in this case, uh, K, the alpha value we have to take as 90 degrees. That alpha is in a downward direction, so that's why minus 90. And uh, beta is equal to in upward direction, that is a uh, plus 90. Why? Because uh, the upper end is at uh, infinity and lower end is at a uh, infinity distance. So alpha equal to beta equal to 90 degrees. Uh, okay. Then you know that uh, Ex is equal to K lambda by R sin beta minus sin alpha. Okay. And uh, Ey is equal to K lambda by r cos alpha minus cos beta if you substitute that alpha and beta values then ex is equal to k lambda by r sin beta that is 90 degrees so sin 90 minus sin alpha that is a minus 90 so what we'll get here ex is equal to k lambda by r sin 90 is 1 sin of minus 90 is minus sin 90 so that's why minus into minus plus will get here sin 90 is 1 so ex is equal to 1 plus 1 2 k lambda by r this is the x component of field intensity due to infinite wire the same way y component is see k lambda by r what can we write cos of minus 90 minus cos 90 then cos 90 is 0 so y component will become equal to 0 for what infinite length wire this is a another case okay so field intensity due to the infinite length wire is Field intensity due to the infinite length wire is y component is 0 and x component is k lambda by r. So that's why the resultant field intensity acts along the x direction that means along the perpendicular line direction that is bisector direction. This is the total field intensity Okay, in the case of uh, infinite length wire. The same way finite length wire. If you take a finite length wire finite length wire semi finite length wire I'm sorry 
sorry semi infinite length wire semi infinite length wire semi infinite length wire semi infinite length wire na one end of the uh, wire we know but another end is at a infinity then in that case uh, one of the example i am taking here for example this is the wire this is the a end uh, where it is i know but the second end b is uh, at a infinity if the b is at infinity i selected a point uh, p here then it is a distance r now this angle is alpha and that uh, beta angle is beta is equal to 90 degrees in a semi infinite length wire here if i select the point p near to that uh, a end then alpha is equal to negative alpha beta is equal to 90 degrees if you substitute that one what is the ex value ex formula is k lambda by r sin beta minus sin alpha substitute that equation in this then ex is equal to k lambda by r sin beta is sin 90 minus of sin minus alpha why because alpha is in a downward direction so ex is equal to k lambda by r sin 90 is 1 minus of minus plus sin alpha this is the x component and uh, y component y component formula is you know that uh, k lambda by r k lambda by r cos alpha minus cos beta okay k lambda by r cos alpha alpha is nothing but here minus cos alpha minus alpha uh, beta is 90 degrees if i substitute that okay then ey is equal to k lambda by r cos of minus alpha cos alpha cos 90 zero okay this is the y component then resultant field intensity will be e bar is equal to ex i cap plus ey j cap we can take okay magnitude of e bar is root over x component square and y component square and uh, direction is tan phi equal to tan phi is equal to y component divided by x component okay from this we can find out the direction and resultant magnitude of uh, what's a field intensity due to the semi infinite length wire there one more is there in a semi infinite length wire <coughs> the second case in semi infinite wire if i selected a point near the end of the semi infinite wire for example if here this is a wire okay one end of the wire i know just i have taken a point p at the end of the semi infinite wire at a distance r then in this case alpha is equal to 0 why because this end is near the point p so that's why alpha is equal to 0 and beta this beta is second end angle between a second end and reference line the second end is at infinity so that's why beta equal to 90 degrees then ex x component is equal to you know the formula what is it k lambda by r sin beta minus sin alpha if you substitute that one ex is equal to k lambda by r sin beta beta is 90 degrees so that's why sin 90 minus sin alpha alpha is 0 so 
ex is equal to k lambda by r sin 90 is 1 so ex is equal to k lambda by r this is the x component of field intensity and uh, y component of field intensity y component of field intensity is uh, k lambda by r cos alpha minus uh, cos beta this is the general formula then k lambda by r cos alpha what is the cos alpha alpha value is here 0 okay and beta value is what's the cos beta cos 90 okay then k lambda by r cos 0 is 1 and cos 90 0 so ey is equal to ey is equal to k lambda by r this is the resultant uh, sorry y component of field intensity due to the semi infinite lay length wire at the one end of the wire next e bar is equal to same exi plus ey j component that is equal to x component is <coughs> along the positive x direction this is the x component and y component is negative y direction so that's why we can write e bar is equal to ex k lambda by r i component minus k lambda by r j component and uh, resultant of e bar mod e bar is equal to root over x component square plus y component square y component square that is equal to root over x component square k lambda by r whole square plus y component square k lambda by r whole square that is equal to root 2 k lambda by r this is the magnitude of uh, e bar in the direction the direction direction we can find out with the formula tan phi is equal to ey by ex okay ey is what sir here k lambda by r and ex is k lambda by r that is equal to 1 then phi is equal to 45 degrees with the x axis 45 degrees with the x axis and now what will get this the resultant field intensity acts like this this is the field intensity due to infinite and a finite lens wave okay finally i am giving the conclusion whenever wire problems come then use that uh, x component of field intensity is equal to k lambda by r sin beta minus sin alpha okay and y component is equal to k lambda by r okay cos alpha minus cos beta with this we can find out the what's our total field intensity but while using these formulas you should follow the sign convention if the angle is below the reference line take as a negative if angle is above the reference line you take as a positive then you can get that answers thank you